It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Power Rankings Tuesday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sportsbook app. I'm Ross Tucker. I think most of you probably guessed that. It's called the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. But if you're new here, welcome to the family. We are daily, Monday through Friday. It's about 30 to 35 minutes of on-demand audio content about the National Football League every single day, Monday through Friday. We also have the Fantasy Feast podcast. For those of you that are into fantasy football or just looking, by the way, and getting hearing a different breakdown of the games from a real football perspective. Same with Even Money, the sports betting podcast, which is just a different way to look at the games, even if you're not into actually wagering on these contests. Both of those will be today, by the way. Uh, you know, different schedule with the holidays. We'll record Even Money with Steve today. We'll record Fantasy Feast Part 1 and 2 with Joe Dolan today. The College Draft Podcast with Emery Hunt already up ready to rock and roll for you guys because we talked about last night's bowl game, a couple more bowl games today. So if you haven't, please check out some of the other shows. I am very confident that you will enjoy those. We'll have a spread the word winner on Friday. Yeah, Christmas. We'll be giving out winners on Christmas Day. The same day, by the way, I'll be calling the Saints and the Vikings for Westwood One. But yes, Christmas Day, we'll have a spread the word winner. Easiest contest I'm aware of. If you're aware of an easier one, let me know. All we ask you to do is retweet or like or comment or just engage in any way on any social media platform. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Ross Tucker NFL. Hopefully you're already following your boy. Or at Ross Tucker Pod is where you know when the show is posted as quickly as possible, as well as the highlight clips from all of our various shows. You can always... See what it looks like. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL is our YouTube page. What we love about the YouTube page is when you comment on it and you subscribe, we give a different cameo style shout out every week, which is really neat. And I think a lot of the people that have gotten them so far have really enjoyed them. We'll have a sponsor confirmation email winner on Friday as well. A ton of awesome sponsors for the holidays, including Headspace which is uh, an Andrew Brandt special that you'll hear about in a little bit. Other than that, it's Big Show time. The Big Show. Good morning, Ross. I'm just going to do my best Ron Burgundy right here. I'm just going to read what's on the screen. And it says, the Steelers dominated the Bengals last night as expected, Ross. What were your biggest thoughts? I don't think I sent you. I don't think I sent you the updated version. Because it's the Steelers got, I changed it to the Steelers got dominated by the Bengals last night as expected, which is the joke, right? Because nobody expected it. So let me start with this. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. And you know what? I'm glad I was wrong. That's what makes this whole thing great. I'm wrong a lot. I mean, I don't like personally having a, a wrong pick, but everybody has wrong picks all the time. That's what makes it so fun. You don't know the Jets are going to beat the Rams. You don't know the Bengals are going to beat the Steelers. That's why we love it. That's why it's awesome. That's why they say any given Sunday or any given Monday night. It cracks me up, the people on social media. This didn't age well. Delete your account. Ha ha, what do you think now? What I think is that I thought the Steelers would win. The Bengals came to play. It was awesome. The Bengals won. That's what I think. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. I'll put my even money betting track record up against pretty much anyone over the last five years. That's documented. No matter how good you are, you're going to get a bunch wrong. And by the way, the spread was like 15 points. Everybody got last night wrong. That's what's so funny to me. It's like the people that act like they knew the Bengals were going to win by 10 points. How about nobody? How about not a soul in the Milky Way galaxy? How about that? Anyway, little diatribe there. That was awesome. That was awesome. That is what I really hold dear about the sport. 
you got to earn it. You got to earn it every time you step out there inside those white lines. You know how Juju Smith-Schuster dances on the other team's logo and he knows it's disrespectful, but he does it anyway. That's why I enjoy thoroughly when Von Bell lights his ass up. That is awesome. That That's what makes it so great. That a guy can do something you don't like, something you think is disrespectful. Maybe they taunt. Maybe they trash talk, whatever. It's a game in which you can legally get back at them physically. And I miss that every day. I miss some guy talking trash and finding another time during that game to hit that son of a gun as hard as I can and know that it hurt him. I don't mean injure. I just mean it hurt him. Gave him a little bit of pain. Gave me a little bit of satisfaction. That's what I miss. That's what I loved about last night. The Bengals came out. That was awesome. Awesome. Josh Bynes. I mean, uh, Lawson. That that was Carl Lawson. That was awesome. Kudos to the Bengals, man. They did look. Big Ben supposedly wants to play in 2021. Probably a bad time to leak that. Probably a bad time to put that out there to then say that and then go out there and play maybe the worst game I've ever seen Big Ben play. Certainly the worst half I've ever seen him play. Atrocious. Steelers didn't have James Conner. Derek Watt got injured on the first punt. Very, very scary. That was about as bad of a concussion as I've seen in a while. Hope he's okay. Hope he doesn't play for a while. That was scary. The Steelers were just a mess, Bry. I mean, fumbled Big Ben center snap. He's fumbling snaps from center with Marquise Pouncey. They've been together for like a decade, and they're fumbling snaps. That leads to a Bengals field goal. Then Von Bell absolutely destroyed Juju Smith-Schuster. And I got no problem with Juju Smith-Schuster. I think he's entertaining. I think he's fun. And But he knows that that gets under people's skin. So if you're going to do that, then you're going to have to pay the consequences. People are going to come out to get you. And that's exactly what happened. He got got. And I love it. I love shutting people up physically. That was amazing. Giovanni Bernard had a touchdown. You know, I don't know that I ever thought I'd see the day, Bri, where the Bengals would out-hit and out-physical the Pittsburgh Steelers. But it happened. They were popping them. I mean, they were so fired up for that game. Mackenzie Alexander, Bind. I mean, it was it was incredible. Um, Big Ben threw one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen. I think he threw it right to Mackenzie Alexander. Another Gio Bernard touchdown. This one like on a little dump pass. You know, Ben was a little bit better in the second half, but not nearly enough. Finley, I think, had 89 yards passing. He's not a very good quarterback, as I said. But credit to Zach Taylor. He got his guys to play hard, and he had a game plan in which he utilized Ryan Finley's legs. I mean, Ryan Finley went 23 yards untouched for a touchdown against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Never thought I'd see the day. Kudos to the Bengals. Deontay Johnson, Benny Snell, TJ Watt, I would say were probably the lone bright spots for the suddenly reeling, reeling Steelers. And they are reeling in my power rankings as well. We'll get to that momentarily. You know what they need, Bri? They need headspace. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. If you remember recently, Andrew Brandt was talking about meditation. Well, listen, life can be stressful even under normal circumstances. 2020 has been brutal. You need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes. That's Headspace. It's awesome. 25 published studies. They have 600,000 five-star reviews, over 60 million downloads. You, yeah, you, deserve to feel happier 
and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash Tucker. That's headspace.com slash Tucker for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash Tucker today. It's time for the all-important power rankings. The worst team in the history of the NFL is... Number 32 this weekend, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, listen, the Bengals and the Jets actually look pretty good this week. They knocked off teams that are going to the playoffs, and the Jags got obliterated by the Ravens. So I go by what I see. And what I see right now is that the Jaguars are the worst team in the NFL. Number 31, the aforementioned Bengals. Man, I'm I'm more surprised by that than I was the Jets. I, I just thought Ryan Finley, Sam Darnold actually I think has a shot. I don't think Ryan Finley has any shot. And I can't believe the Steelers lost to him. At this pace in 30 weeks, the Jets are going to be number one. But they're at number 30 now. Keep moving up one, one slot. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I I thought the Jets would be last all year. You got to admit, Brian, I was ahead of the curve. I had the Jets 31 the last couple weeks ahead of the Bengals. So I already knew that they might not get the number one pick and that they might not be the worst team. The Jags are the worst team right now, so they probably deserve the number one pick. Number 29, the Lions. Lions fired their special teams coach. Just weird. Like, who made that decision? There's two games left. There's no GM. There's an interim head coach. Who's the the guy that fired Braden Coombs or Combs, I think? I mean, I'm I'm, uh, I'm perplexed on that one. Number 28, the 49ers. Not sure that I ever thought we'd be here. And they've had some unlucky turnover. Luck? You can't really say that, can you, Bri? Unlucky turnover luck? I don't think so. Doesn't sound right. Really say it, but that just doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right. I agree. Anyway, that's what they've had. So maybe they're not that bad. I think the Jets, Bengals, Jags are all clearly the worst. And then there's like this next group, Lions. But the Niners deserve to be in there right now. Number 27, the Panthers. You know what? Their young guys on defense showed me a little something against Green Bay in the second half Saturday night. And if Teddy doesn't fumble, they might have won that game if Teddy doesn't fumble on the goal line. So kudos to the Panthers. I still dropped them a couple spots because there's some other teams to raise, but that was a, a decent performance. They, by the way, fired their general manager, Marty Herney. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. I, you know, we'll get into this maybe more with Andrew tomorrow. I think they want to give Marty Herney the chance to to latch on with Washington. And I think with these other teams like Houston and Detroit interviewing people, Carolina already knew they were going to do this. So they didn't want to, they didn't want to fall behind and they want to start the process. Number 26, the Broncos. So the Broncos, that was a big step back for them on Saturday. You know, they had done some positive things recently. It was a big step back. 25, the Texans. They have not been very good, but it's like I give them – I cannot put them in the last five teams almost simply because of Deshaun Watson. I just can't put them in the bottom five because he gives them a chance every time out. And if they played a series of five games in my backyard, I feel like Deshaun Watson would get his team – to beat the Broncos or the Panthers or the Niners three out of those five times. 24, the Chargers. Go, Chargers, go. They've won two in a row. They've won two close games in a row. 23, the Cowboys. Cowboys have won a couple in a row too, correct? They beat the Niners. I'm trying to think who they played the week before. I think they won, no. No? I, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I think the Cowboys have won two in a row. They've certainly won, like, I know they beat Minnesota after the bye. So, man, 
These weeks are running together at this point. But the Cowboys have clearly played better. Big game for them Sunday against the Eagles. Number 22, the Atlanta Falcons. So the Falcons, you know, they, they've been competitive, but they're just good enough to lose close games, as we've illustrated throughout the year. I do think, you know, they're probably – getting close to falling behind the Cowboys and Chargers to bring out of this week goes. But they had a 17-0 lead on the Bucs. But they lost a 17-0 lead against the Bucs. Number 21, the Philadelphia Eagles. Didn't move them either way. Didn't really change my opinion. They're not a good team, but with Jalen Hurts, he gives them a chance. They're scoring more points. They're moving the ball much better. They're more competitive. And I'm actually really looking forward to that Eagles-Cowboys game. Number 20, the New York Giants. So they only dropped one spot. We'll see what happens when they get Daniel Jones back. You know, the defense, they're just in a bad way. You know, now James Bradbury came off the COVID list. That'll help a lot because Baker Mayfield was able to light them up pretty good. 19, it's the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings. And your boy will be calling the Minnesota Vikings game on Christmas Day. So... If you guys are driving around on Christmas Day or whatever you're doing, tune in. Uh, I'm sure it'll be on like every station. What else are they going to have on their station? And tell your family, hey, that's the guy I listen to every day. It's my buddy Ross Tucker. Number 18, the New England Patriots. Big game for them Monday night against the Buffalo Bills. Listen, I, I'm just telling you now, the Bills are not going to show them any mercy. They've waited a long, long time to have this shoe be on the other foot. And the Patriots better come to play or it could get ugly. Looking forward to that one. Number 17, the Las Vegas Raiders. Really looking forward to watching them against the Dolphins. It's the Hawaii All-Star Game. Marcus Mariota, Tua Tungo Vailoa. The entire state of Hawaii will be watching. It's going to be fun. Fun game between those guys. Number 16, the Chicago Bears. Unreal, right? I think they've scored over 30 points three games in a row. Unreal. You know, if they didn't blow that Lions game, they'd be 8-6 and six right now with a game against the Jags. I mean, that Lions game was killer. They'd be right there in the thick of the playoff race. And they're playing well on offense. Trubisky. You know, all they needed to do was sit them down, evidently. Number 15, the Washington football team. Only dropped them one spot. Essentially just flipped them with the Arizona Cardinals, who looked pretty impressive in that win against the Eagles. But Washington wasn't bad. They hung tough with the Seahawks. They just need to get Alex Smith back. 14, the Cardinals. They're sacking the quarterback, which is a good sign. Kyler Murray's playing a lot better, which is a good sign. You know, they still probably gave up more points and yards than you'd like against the Eagles, but credit to Jalen Hurts. Cardinals looking like a team deserving of that last playoff spot. And now we get to number 13, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is that not unbelievable? But I I, I went through it. This is, You guys know how I do this, okay? I went through it, and I said right now, in my backyard, in a series of five games, they w I don't think the Steelers would beat the teams ahead of them. Even the Cardinals, I, I debated. I still think that they'd find a way to beat Washington or the Bears. But even the Cardinals, I kind of went back and forth on. Steelers could easily be 14 instead of 13. Number 12, the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins number 12. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins. They found a way without all their skilled guys. That was super impressive to run the ball down the Patriots' throat, to get a win. Patriots still trying to have a winning season, still trying to at least get to 500. Dolphins didn't have any of their dudes. That was one of the more impressive Dolphins wins of the year. Number 11, the Tampa Bay Bucks. I didn't change them. You know, they've been 11 for a while. They are highly inconsistent. They have good moments, bad moments, but I wouldn't feel great about them in a series of games in my backyard. 
I think they'd win one or two of them. I think they might lose two or three against these teams that are ahead of them. What I do feel great about is DraftKings, number one rated in my sports book power rankings, especially because they've got all kinds of awesome deals for you guys. I know you guys love football, right? And maybe you don't need to make football games more interesting, but maybe you do need to do that for basketball. To celebrate the return of basketball, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new players 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. This week, That's right. All you have to do is bet $1 on any featured matchup this week. And if your team wins, you cash a crisp $100. While we are all excited for the return of basketball, let's not forget football's playoffs are right around the corner as well. So head to the app now to check out all of DraftKings daily odds boosts. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS when you sign up to get 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup. This week, that's code ROSS for new players to get a shot at $100 on any featured matchup this week. Limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey PA only. Restrictions apply to DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem called 100 Gambler. Number 10, the Baltimore Ravens. Playing better, Bry. They are playing. They are the anti Steelers, right? Like they are heading into the postseason looking good. Now they just got to make sure they make it, by the way. Whereas the Steelers are heading into the postseason looking bad. Number nine, Indianapolis Colts. Wasn't dominant against the Texans again, but they got it done and they feel like a team that legitimately, 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 legitimately could do some damage in the postseason. Rivers playing better. They're running it pretty well. The weird thing is their defense isn't playing as great right now. Number eight, the Tennessee Titans. How about, by the way, DeForest Buckner not making the Pro Bowl? That's an that's an LOL right there. LOL. Titans. Man, their offense. I saw somebody, I tweeted this last night, at Ross Tucker NFL. NFL on CBS had these stats where, like, Tannehill has better stats than Mahomes over the last 24 games since he took over in Tennessee. It's incredible. And it's basically Arthur Smith's highlight reel, resume reel. So here's the deal. Their defense is not going to play great. They don't have enough good players on defense. They're going to have to win like shootouts. Number seven, the Seattle Seahawks. You know what? It's the, the, the script has totally flipped for them. Offense doesn't look great, but defense playing much better and giving them a chance in these games so that they can win. And they will be playing number six, the Rams, this Sunday. Ginormous. Are you going to be there, Bray? Yes, I am. Where is it? In Seattle. Wow, you've had a lot of long flights this year. I have, I have. Man, you're racking up the miles. I, that's, uh, an awesome, actually, that's an awesome game. Ross, in fact, I, I calculated how many miles I've already flown. It's over 55,000 just this football season. Wow. What do you do on the plane usually? I usually read or uh, download a bunch of uh, shows from Netflix, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, whatever. Must be nice. Which I'm I'm getting better at, which I've never been able to do up until recently. I've never been able to sleep on a plane. Oh, you're sleeping sometimes too. A little bit, yeah. Especially on the overnight flights coming home, I can now. Must be nice. I work when I'm on planes. I work to try to grow RT media. <laughs> <laughs> um no, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. I, I can never really sleep. And honestly, like I'm not trying to act like oh, I'm like the world's hardest worker because by the way, none, none of what I feel like I do is work, but I don't ever watch shows. I can't really sleep. Like there's always something work related I'm doing. And, uh, I guess I'm envious when I go to the, like, when I when I walk on the plane to the bathroom, Bri, and I come back and I see people watching shows or, 
they're on their phone like playing like Scrabble or whatever these games are on their phone. I guess I'm a little jealous of people that can just kind of veg out or just relax on want. I, I just can't do it. I just, I, with all the different stuff I've got going, like my to-do list never ends. And so the plane is when like I do expense reports or get my notes ready for the next game or watch the teams for the next game or get my podcast script or power rankings, whatever it is. So that'd be nice. Um, yeah. You know what though? I'd rather, I'd rather have the free time when I'm home with my family. You know what I mean? Like I try to maximize that plane time so that when I'm home, I don't have extra work I still need to do. Like I've done all of that invoicing for the different media gigs, the monthly invoicing or whatever. I've done that on the plane. So when I'm home, I can like be present. Last night we did um dance party in the exercise room. We did yoga, me and the girls. And then my wife worked late. She had made a really good carrot cake. So we had carrot cake with ice cream for dinner. That's how daddy rolls. Okay. I like it. Um, anyway, they're playing the Rams. I think they're, I'll just tell you right now. I think the Rams are going to win this game. It's called a bounce back. And I think they'll have a major bounce back. Although Cam Akers sounds like he's out for a little bit. All right. Number five, the Cleveland Browns. Unbelievable. Un Say that again, Brian. Number five, the Cleveland Browns. Soak it in. Soak it in, people of Cleveland. Soak it in, Browns fans. You deserve it. They deserve it. They absolutely are one of the five best teams right now. The way they've been playing, the way Baker Mayfield's been playing, incredible. Number four, the New Orleans Saints. So, listen, I, you know, I, I think Breeze will play much better on Friday. I think he was a little bit rusty. You know, he's such a guy of routine and preparation. I think he'll play better on Friday against the Vikings, and I think they have a chance to move back up these rankings a little bit again. Number three, the Packers. You know, they got a great chance to go to the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers is probably the likely MVP, but they don't inspire that much confidence as them being like a great team. Number two, the Buffalo Bills. Say that again, Bri. Number five, the Cleveland Browns. Oh, uh, number two, the Buffalo Bills. I mean, what is going on with the world? Well, I mean, this is 2020. The Cleveland Browns are number five, and the Buffalo Bills are number two. In the entire NFL, in my power rankings. And yes, I really believe that. I think right now the Buffalo Bills, the defense is playing better. Josh Allen is out of his mind. I think they're the second best team in the NFL. Wow. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. Unbelievable. Russ's number one team, which is totally meaningless, but it's fun and will get many of you incredibly annoyed, is... Once again, number one, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, you know, I don't think that anybody is incredibly annoyed that I have the Chiefs number one in my power rankings. I think most people would agree the Chiefs deserve to be number one in my power rankings. I think most people would agree that the Chiefs are the number one team. And they certainly have a great shot because it looks like they're going to have home field advantage in only two home games. they got a great chance to get the Super Bowl again. They'll be favored over the NFC team. And they might repeat, which is extremely impressive. And I wrote a story in The Athletic. I didn't think they would. But they're looking right now like they got a really good chance to do that. I forgot to mention earlier, Brian, we do have a new patron, Frederick Krieger. Patreon.com slash RT Media. Frederick, welcome to the family, buddy. Love it. Now you got to engage on our private Slack channel so we learn more about you. Where are you from? Who's your squad? How do you listen to the show? Love it. Love to hear from new listeners. It uh, means a great deal to us. Patreon.com slash RT Media. We have got shout outs in order. Pizza Boy Brewing dynastyfreaks.com finish the season strong 
or make sure you go to dynastyfreaks.com bookmark it so you're ready for the off season sport of culture steakhousesports.com vision comics with an x busy day at the ross tucker media podcast network factory fantasy feast even money just like juju smith schuster last night get some i think we're done here Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.